When Joe Biden takes the oath of office tomorrow to become the 46th president of the United States, he will have a monumental task ahead of him, containing the coronavirus, helping with an economic recovery, and addressing racial inequality just to start. CBS News senior White House and political correspondent Ed O'Keefe in Washington tonight. And Ed, the Biden-Harris team has already been laying out some ambitious plans for the first 100 days in office. That's right. In addition to trying to figure out what to do about the pandemic and working with Congress to boost funding for vaccination programs and testing programs across the country and finding a way to reopen schools that are still closed amid the pandemic, they're also sending a massive immigration reform bill to Congress in hopes that it will be considered at some point this spring. There will also be a slew of executive orders on everything ranging from rejoining the Paris Global Climate Agreement to ending the ban on people from predominantly Muslim countries traveling into the United States and mandating that masks be worn at all federal government property across the country. Some of this is more symbolic than, you know, actually meaty. Uh, others are going to start to make significant changes and roll back some of the Trump administration's programs and policies. Uh, but all of this designed to try to demonstrate in the early days that the Biden administration is off and running and picking up speed aggressively, especially when it comes to dealing with the pandemic. And Ed, let's talk about tomorrow. Uh, the inauguration is going to look unlike anything we've ever seen before. And between pandemic precautions and the unprecedented security we've seen in Washington, what do you think we can expect to see tomorrow? Well, you know, you're still going to see a lot of the familiar moments that have marked other inaugurations. What is going to be notably different is there won't be much of an in-studio audience, so to speak. There won't be people out on the National Mall watching. There won't be people along the parade route cheering for the new president and vice president. I've been struck, Paul, in recent days how much Washington is beginning to look almost like an abandoned movie set. They have closed a considerable part of the city for security concerns. Much of it was not going to be this way before what happened on January 6th at the Capitol. But walking some of these streets just today, for example, they're all closed off. And then you get closer to the White House and you see what has been set up for the virtual parade and the little bit of parading that Mr. Biden and Vice President Harris will do. And you realize it's just just it looks like a television set. Mm -hmm. And so in many ways, those watching at home won't necessarily feel that it's that different. Uh, but there won't be as many people up on the stage built for this, the same spot that was uh, the site of much of the violence at the Capitol just two weeks ago. There won't be, of course, people down on the mall. Instead, there are hundreds of thousands of flags and a tribute in light to the hundreds of thousands of Americans who've been killed by the COVID-19 virus. Uh, and there won't be inaugural balls, but there will be a primetime concert, including Bruce Springsteen and Justin Timberlake and the playwright Lin-Manuel Miranda, among others. So for those enjoying this or perhaps dreading it, depending on your views, from home, there will be plenty to see. Uh, but some of the trappings certainly will be very different. But the important thing, the new president raising his hand to take the oath of office tomorrow, moving forward as America always does. Ed O'Keefe in Washington. Ed, thanks.